All right, Algebra 2, Unit 6, Lesson 11. It's called Extending the Domain <clears throat> of Trigonometric Functions. And our goal is, let's think about the value of cosine and sine for all types of inputs. Mainly negative angles. We haven't done any negative angles yet. We started out with just dealing with angles between 0 and 2 pi. And then we got past 2 pi and went around the unit circle more than once. And now we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to have... Um, angles that are negative, okay? So, just a quick little, um, quick little um, review here. This is my unit circle here, okay? And then this is my, my um, angle, right? my point on the unit circle. As I move this way, angle's positive. That's the only way we've gone, okay? So, you know, if I did something like this, going in that direction, okay, so <clears throat> counterclockwise is going to be a positive angle. All right, so I'll write that down right here. And then I'll do one <clears throat> maybe over here on the right. So so if my angle goes the other direction, clockwise. That in that motion, something like that. Okay, clockwise will be a negative angle. <clears throat> so, I'll write that down. Right. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the main concept that we're going to be focusing on today. All right, so let's take a look at this example. Go ahead, pause the video and read it. <clears throat> but basically um, what's happening here is we got this windmill situation like we had in lesson 6.10. <clears throat> and basically the windmill is right here. And this thing is... This is the blade that we're looking at, point P. And yesterday we were rotating in this direction, okay, counterclockwise. Today we're going to go negative pi over 2 radians from where it starts. So if it goes negative pi over 2, it's going to go right there. <clears throat> Remember, pi over 2 is 90. So negative pi over 2 would be negative 90. So it would look just like that. So that would be at negative pi over 2. Okay? So that would be at the lowest point. The y coordinate would be at negative 1. Okay? You can see if this is the origin right here, we move, we move um, left and right 0, but down 1. Okay? So that would be. So I would agree with her um, because <clears throat> it's the same. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, wait, wait, wait a minute, I thought that was 3 pi over 2. Well, it is also 3 pi over 2. If I go this way, all right, I'm going to go pi over 2, 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 right there. So it's the same angle, okay? So it just depends on which way you go. So I'll write it in red, okay? Um, so it's the same angle. And, and remember what we learned yesterday, you can always keep adding or subtracting 2 pi to any angle, and it'll be the same um, position on the unit circle. So if you think about it here, <clears throat> negative, negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi is going to give you 3 over 2. Okay, so they're the same. All right? And you can keep adding more multiples of 2 pi and you'd have other angles. Now those angles are called coterminal angles. The book doesn't really use that word 
yet, but I'm going to introduce it. Okay. Coterminal angles are angles that are in the same position, but they are different angles. Okay. So those are both in the same position on the unit circle. All right. So <clears throat> here's the next thing. So we got a clock. Um, before we start, let's make sure we understand every number on the unit circle, I'm sorry, every number on the clock is basically spaced out by 30 degrees. Because I'm just going to draw here in quadrant one. If I were to split this quadrant up here, okay, we know that that's 90 degrees cut into thirds. So each angle or each number, each angle is going to be 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is the same as pi over six. You should have those numbers memorized, okay? Um, if you don't have them memorized, you could kind of think of it like this. You could think of it as, okay, we got this whole half circle right here. And this half circle, you should know, oops, you should know that a half circle is pi radians. So you could think of it as pi equals 180, we know that, divide each side by 6, and we get to pi over 6 equals 30. Okay, so every every number is, is 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians. All right, so let me erase some of this here. And let me clear these guys off. So now let's, let's, let's see here at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. we swing this way. So we basically went negative 90 degrees because we went clockwise. So we're going to do it in radians, though. So we're going to say negative pi over 2. Now, if you wanted to count by pi over 3s, so we'd have, I'm sorry, by pi over 6s, so we'd have pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. And 3 pi over 6 would reduce to 1 half. Okay? All right. Let's go to 7 p.m. 7 p.m. would be right there. So kind of like the same thing. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. So 4 pi over 6, that will reduce to 2 pi over 3. Okay? But it's negative. Oh, I should have corrected my negative because we went in a negative direction. Okay, 11 p.m., right there. So we're going all the way, oops, going all the way right there. So it's negative again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pi over six, so negative eight pi over six which would reduce to negative 4 pi over 3. Now, the last one, 4 a.m., it's real tempting to just say negative pi over 6. And, and that's not fully wrong, okay? But a lot of people just say, oh, right there, negative pi over 6. But remember, it's the next morning. So what's happening here, your, your hand is going all the way around 2 pi, or negative 2 pi, and then another negative pi over 6. So it's almost like negative 2 pi minus pi over 6, right? So we end up with, if you add those, if you do negative 2 minus 1, 6, we get negative 13 pi over 6. So that one. <clears throat> okay. Negative pi over 6 wouldn't necessarily be a terrible answer, but um, the best answer would be negative 13 pi over 6, okay? Okay, so the next um, example here um, in your book, the next activity is going to have us graph y equals sine of theta and y equals cosine of theta on an xy axis. And I'm going to put them both on the same graph. And we've already kind of done this from zero on. We've done, we've done that in this section here, over here. We've graphed the positive values, but we have not gone over here in the negative area. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> and I'm going to get this kind of, kind of um, 
set up. So you're going to want to probably grab a straight edge if you're doing this in your workbook. Um, you're going to want to draw this as neat as you can. I'm going to get this labeled here. I'm going to count by pi over 2. So I'm going to, I'm going to need eight equally spaced marks on each side because it says we have to go from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. So if I count by pi over 2s, we're going to have 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is going to be pi over 2. Remember, we're just adding one half, so that's two and a half, which is five halves. Three, seven pi over two, and then line up to a pi. <clears throat> then this way, everything's the same, just negative. And I need to go to one and negative one. Okay, so let's do this. Let's graph our cosine curve. And you might remember that cosine curve starts at one. If you don't remember where that comes from, I put a unit circle here. The cosine of zero is one. And then I go to pi over two. The cosine of pi over two is zero. And then I go to pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1. And then I go to 3 pi over 2, it's at 0. And then back to 2 pi, we go back up to 1. Okay, so I'm using my x-coordinates because the x-coordinates are cosine. <clears throat> and this was from a couple days ago. We get that. All right, that's one period, one full cycle. But now... Um, in the last lesson, we learned we could keep going around the circle. So if I go a full circle and then another pi over 2, we're going to be at 5 pi over 2, which would be back up top, right back up here again. Okay, So that's going to be at 0. And then 3 pi is the same as pi, so that's going to be down at negative. 7 pi over 2 is the same as 3 pi over 2. And 4 pi is the same as 2 pi. Because 2 pi plus 2 pi when you get rid of 4 pi. There we go. We've now sketched two full periods. And then if I go to the left, you're going to follow the same pattern. It's just negative pi over 2 goes this way. So negative pi over 2 is that way, 0. Okay. And then negative pi would go this way. So that's down here at negative 1. And then you can just kind of follow the pattern here. You always have to get the 0 when you cross through the axis. So I'm going to look like that now. And there we go. And I'm going to label this y equals cosine theta. Okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to graph the sine of theta. So I'm going to kind of erase on my unit circle here. All right, so what's the sine at 0? Sine of 0 is 0. So you probably remember that from the other day. Sine curve starts there. And then we go up to pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And then back to 2 pi, we're at 0. So I'm going to plot all those points. And I'm really just getting them from the unit circle. And here's one full period. And then we just keep repeating the pattern. <clears throat> and then over here, the sine of negative pi over 2 would be 
same as 3 pi over 2, so that's down here to negative 1, and then 0. 1, then 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and then 0. So you see that you get that periodic graph for both of these, and they go on forever and ever and ever because you can keep going around the circle however many times as you want. Um, the next question is the y-axis is a line of symmetry for which one of the two graphs? So, obviously, the blue graph is the cosine graph. Let me label this y equals sine of theta. So the blue one is the one where if I slice it right at the y-axis, right here, okay, right there, I would have a flip-flop um, across that axis if I reflected it. The green one would not. The green one would end up, and I'll, I'll graph the reflection in red. This little point here, this point, whoops, this point would be reflected over here, so it's not a reflection um, onto itself. So that is not a line of symmetry for the sine curve. Okay. So that one would be y equals cosine of theta. Um, it's a mirror image across the y axis. Okay. And your signs change really if you think about it. So, like, you know, if I had pi is negative one. Negative pi is also negative one. So the y coordinate is the same. You just change the sign of x. Okay. So using graphing technology to graph the functions, we're going to graph y equals cosine theta and y equals sine of theta on the same axes. So I would just go to use your graphing calculator or go to Desmos. Uh, go to Desmos here. Y equals cosine. I'm going to use x instead of theta y equals sine of x. And the one thing that you might notice is it's very similar to our graphs, but we're going by whole numbers. We want to go by units of pi. So I'm going to hit the little wrench here. And on my x-axis, I'm going to change my units to pi. I'm going to type in the word pi and divide by 2. Okay. And I'm going to turn off these minor grid lines. So that makes it look a little bit better now, okay? Um, so if you look at the question that it asked us on there after I graph it, let's go back. Identify two points where the graphs intersect, one with a negative theta coordinate, one with a positive theta coordinate. What is the exact theta coordinate for each point? So we got multiple ones in the positive range. We got this one. We got this one, we got this one, and they go on forever. So I'm going to turn some of these off. I'm just going to say that one right there, pi over 4, is my positive point of intersection. And then my negative one, same thing. I got a bunch of them here. But, oh, wait, no, that, not that one. Sorry. That one. Okay, I got a bunch of ones over there. But, again, I'm going to just take this one, negative 3 pi over 4. Okay? So I go back to my my board here. So my answer is pi over 4 is my positive. Negative 3, off, three pi over 4 is the, the negative one that I chose. Now the y coordinates. Now you might be tempted just on, on the calculator to just type in 0 0.707 and negative 0 0.707, which is fine. So we got 0 0.707 and negative 0.707. But really, that comes from the unit circle. If you look at your unit circle at pi over 4, okay, on your unit circle, I'm going to go back to slide here. Pi over 4, you see how you're sine and cosine? I just circled it right there. Those are equal. So really, it's radical 2 over 2, okay? So if I actually typed in the square root of 2 divided by 2 into my calculator, I'm going to get 0.707. The calculator gives me the decimal 
but we know that the exact value is radical two over two, and this is going to be negative radical two over two. Okay, so so basically, you know, and then the way the question is worded is kind of funky, but it's pretty much the order pair pi over four radical two over two and negative pi over four negative radical two over two. All right, so those are the points right there and right there. And what you could do is you could you could keep adding two pi. So like this point right here is obviously a full period length. From here, you can tell it's it's a full cycle on the curve. So it's really like I added two pi. So that would be, you know, this point right here would be negative three pi over four plus two pi, which would give me, what is that, nine pi over four? No, five pi over four, five pi over four, okay? So there's that. Um, same thing up here, that point, the pi over four, you could add two pi to get the next one. It's not really on my graph up there, but there it is. Okay, and then the last question here, this. Last question here. What could be the value of cosine of theta if sine of theta equals zero? So I'm going to go, my sine curve is the blue one. Okay, so the blue one is y equals sine of theta. I know that because it goes through the origin. The black curve is y equals cosine of theta. That starts up at one. So when sine of theta equals zero, so I'm going to go on the blue graph and plot all my points where the sine is zero, okay, the y coordinate is zero right there. What could be the cosine of theta? Well, if you look at your graph here, the cosine here is one. The cosine here is negative one. The cosine here is one. The cosine here is negative one. The cosine here is one. So your answer is obviously going to be 1 or negative 1, depending on theta, okay? So really, if it's 0 plus 2 pi, plus or minus any multiple of 2 pi, it's going to be 1, okay? Because if you look here, these are equally spaced 2 pi. These are equally spaced 2 pi. So, so it's really 0 plus 2 pi plus or minus 2 pi times some multiple would give me the positive one. Right? I don't expect you to know that. That's just a little bonus. Um, the other one would be, I'm starting at pi, still 2 pi away. So this other one here for the negative one, this would be pi plus or minus any multiple of 2 pi, that would give me negative 1, okay? But again, that's just a little bit future what we're going to do. All right. What do the y values in the graph of y equals cosine theta represent? Well, they obviously represent the y coordinate, or I'm sorry, the x coordinate on the unit circle. So... And then the y values represent the y coordinates of the unit circle for all angles. Okay. And last thing, point A is at zero radians with the coordinate one zero on the unit circle. Point B is the result of rotating point A, result of point A rotating negative five pi over four radians. I'm gonna cross this part off, the counterclockwise part. We're just gonna go negative 
5 pi over 4 radians. I need two other positive angles of rotation to take A to B. So I go negative 5 pi over 4. This is negative 4 pi over 4. Negative 5 pi over 4 would be right there. And again, remember, pi over 4 is like you slice your half circle into four sections, okay? So that would be kind of like that. Each one of those would be pi over 4. <clears throat> Okay, so actually, so really, this is kind of like you're saying here. If I want a positive angle, it's like one, two, three pi over four. Okay, there's one, but I could go all the way around. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pi over four. Okay, so all those. Would work, and you could keep adding two pi. Or if you don't want to count like that and draw it out, or you don't have a picture, you know, you could do negative five pi over four, and you can just keep adding two pi. And you could add another two pi. All right? If you type in negative five fourths plus two in your calculator, you'll get three fourths, and then if you put plus two, you'll get eleven fourths. Then you just add the pi along. All right, that is it for this lesson. Make sure you do your homework.